This is Josiah Plays Pillars of Eternity. I'm gonna go into Thirsch's house here. The last location in Stalwart. And then the town will be fully and thoroughly explored. Steady does it. So, is that a dwarf or an Orlin? He's got some fish in a barrel. I could shoot them. Got all kinds of goodies in here. We're not going to steal this shit, though. It must be soon. Two days, no more. I'll get it open. Finished. Durkin Copper Bracelet. Though Durkin's battery is mostly known for its steel, the refinery has also produced extremely high quality copper that was used in coinage, art, and jewelry. This copper bracelet is typical of the jewelry that was produced in the community at its height. Hmm. Interesting that he would have that. Light. Don't don't Flame worry, sir. Stop. I'm not gonna steal your shit. I'm just picking this lock on your chest for for fun. The shaft of each spear is splintered and broken, each of them held together only by tightly bound leather straps. Well, that doesn't sound like it would work very well. These necklaces have been made from the teeth and claws of various predators, wolves, bears, and lions. Oh my. Not, no, that's lions, tigers, and bears. Alright, let's talk to him. Let's quick save, just in case. I don't know. Let's just do it. He's a dwarf. Okay. This dwarf is busy staring into the fire, slowly puffing away on his pipe. As you greet him, he's visibly startled, and his pipe clatters to the floor. I'm sorry. Didn't hear you come in. My ears aren't what they used to be. He stoops, wincing, to retrieve his pipe. When he rises again, he has a hand against his side. So he's injured. How did you get injured? Wasn't the ogres, I can tell you that. Put a few arrows in one of those, and they generally have the good sense to back off. But I've been hunting this wolf for near a year now. A man-eater. Cunning, nasty thing. Every time I get close, it just slips away. A man-eater, huh? Oh, oh, here she comes. Oh, watch out, boy, she'll chew you up. Oh, oh, here she comes. She's a man-eater. Probably not the same thing. <laughs> All right. Man-eating wolf, I sense a quest coming. The beast has already claimed many lives. The first victim was my son, Saldron. Oh, Saldron, you'll be missed. Thirsch looks down at his pipe for a moment, features hardening. Got the better of me this last time. Distracted me long enough for one of its kin to turn up. <laughs> Nearly bit me clean in half. I'm a few weeks out from trying again. He winces. No animal is going to best me. I'll bring it down. It needs doing. But I warn you, this beast is not to be trifled with. It must make its lair somewhere to the west. If you mean to go there, keep your wits about you. Oh, I keep my wits. I keep them all the time. I got wits for days. Watch yourself on the mountain. In these lean times, everything looks like prey to something. I have some questions. Coming to your elders for advice, is it? What can I do for you? Teodor said I should talk to you before I head to Longwatch Falls. And good thing you did. Hot springs north of the road are crawling with Lagafath. I'm surprised Teodor found himself out there. The thing to know about Lagafath is they're fast. Tolerant to cold, too, so try another angle of attack. Something seems to occur to him. He pats his pockets, clenching his pipe between his teeth. These will come in handy. Use them if you get into trouble. He hands you a few sealed bottles. The old hunter looks you up and down, puffing on his pipe. I got some potions of mirrored image, apparently. 
But if I'm being honest, you may not even need them. You handled those ogres well enough, and you look like you could hold your own against these Legafath too. He taps his pipe ash into the fire pit. What can you tell me about Stalwart? Well, I can tell you it won't be here much longer if things go on as they are. With the mines closed, we've lost what put us on the map in the first place. We're losing people every month. Too many mouths to feed and not enough to support them. Even the game's dwindling. Well, that's not good. <laughs> I've been lucky. I've hides and horns enough to keep the traders happy, but now the ogres are picking the rest of us off. What can you tell me about the ogres? Only that they've been coming down in force again and again, trying to drive us out or kill us outright. The moment we started looking into Durgan's battery, it was like we'd kicked a hornet's nest. Ah, oh, so the ogres might have something to do with Durgan's battery. You made a good showing against that last group, by the way. I think you've given them reason to think twice about coming back. Yeah, I kicked the crap out of that last group. Why is the hunting so poor? It's been a colder season than usual, and... The elk herds aren't faring well. We're stuck fighting with the ogre clans and the wolves over what's left. Not to mention the occasional beast. We've lost a lot of young hunters. You must have some interesting hunting stories. Long hours checking snares and waiting out elk, mostly. Used to hunt some of the big ones. Bear, Stelgare. But up here, it comes down to necessity. Which means keeping Stalwart fed, or else keeping it safe. Thing is, the last hunt didn't go so well. As you can see. There's grunts. Has the legacy struck Stalwart as well? It has. We had some hope in the early days that we'd be spared, isolated as we are. That hope died in a hurry. Not everyone's been so unlucky, of course. You'll see a few pampered sprats around. So I believe we had figured out in the main story that the leaden key was going around activating these ancient uh, Ingwithin machines that were taking the souls out of people, and that's why the Hollowborn were happening, because their souls were getting taken by these machines. So they must have activated a machine like that up here near White March as well. Treating them like precious stones won't see them grow up any faster, if at all. The sudden sorrow in his features belies his soft laughter. <laughs> That's all the questions I had. Thirsh only inclines his head in acknowledgement, tapping out his pipe. Who are you? I'm Thirsh. I've lived here long enough that... Kith have started calling me the Old Hunter. And that's about all I can say for myself. Farewell. New quest, The Hunter's Favor. One of Stalwart's best hunters, Thirsch, has found his match in a cunning wolf that has repeatedly eluded his efforts to trap and kill it. While his most recent injuries prevent him from making another attempt himself, Thirsch hopes that the beast can be dealt with before it preys upon more villagers. Hunt down the wolf. Thirsch has described his hunt for a dangerous and very large wolf that is preying on villagers within the russet wood. According to Thirsch, the wolf makes its lair in the area, though he has not been able to determine the den's location. Addendum added the thermal pearl. Thirsch warned me that Lagofath are fast and resistant to cold. He also gave me potions that might help with the fight. Yeah, I have some of those already that aren't that aren't even equipped. So let 
We have lots of stuff that I just haven't wanted to sell that I'm holding on to, even though a lot of this stuff is not really useful. Okay. So that's it for, for Thiersh then. We've talked to him. We've got a quest to kill a wolf. No ordinary wolf. And with that out of the way, we are now finished with Stalwart Village. So I want to rest so that I can fix up Adair's major fatigue. So what I think I'm going to do... Nothing really going on at the old... Stronghold. I gotta figure out, first of all, where am I gonna go? Well, let's figure that out... later. I'm just going to zip back to Cad Newer real fast. And, um... Rest here real fast so I can keep my nice mechanics we could bonus go for going. Some shit I about now. Yeah, I know you're tired, Adair. That's why we had to come back here. Arabius finishes escorting supplicant and returns to the stronghold. Supplicant has arrived from Gilded Vale, seeking 270 copper or an escort. Yeah, we'll send an ex escort. Sagani, make it happen. So we're going to quickly rest and get the Artificer's Hall bonus. And then we're going to go back. So let's figure out where we want to go first. So what we have... Berrigan and the Ice Caves. Those would be... Up near... Near Durgan's Battery, I guess. Near Durgan's Battery. Durgan's Battery. That's all the main quests. But then we have... Mestla, The wilds that surround Durgan's Battery. Thermal Pearls at Long Watch Falls. The Gleaming Society. Long Watch Falls. This is up by Durgan's Battery. We don't know what's going on with the fisherman's penance, apparently. We could go talk to the ducal palace leader in Defiance Bay. Um... west of town near Durgan's battery gift bearer apparently by Durgan's battery or the russet wood waters abbey of the fallen moon apparently we have no idea where that is 
and the wolf is also within the russet wood. So we have multiple things to do in each in each location. I think I'm inclined to go What are we thinking? We thinking Russet Wood first or Long Watch Falls? We'll save Durgan's battery. I'm thinking Russet Wood. That is what I'm thinking. So let's go. One day, six hours from Cadnua to Russet Wood. Okay. I've got pretty decent athletics, at least three athletics on every member of my party. So they can stay awake a pretty decent long time without um, getting too fatigued. All right, we've got blowing wind and snow. Light, flame, and sound. We'll keep to ourselves. Russet wood. Well, let's see what there is to see. Some ringer berries. There's a deer. What is that? Bitter spirit. Yes? Yes, my friend? Do you know anything about this place? Not a thing! I'll take some notes! Alright, well... Be cautious. Be constant. Sneaky, sneaky person. Come sneaking up here. Get a tin hat. Oh my goodness. It's a lot of bitter spirits. So I don't believe I have fought bitter spirits before, so I'm not sure what their deal is gonna be. And then there's a Minpuigra too. Uh, this looks dangerous. It looks like danger. Hey. Hey. Alright, here we go. Let's drop a little bit of a blinding on the Imprigra. Yeah. Go pop his defensive thing. And try to do the into the fray. Come moving up. Fire attack there. Everybody else just actually no. Get on the Minpugra again. We don't want it casting bullshit spells on us. Let's uh, repulse. Oh, they're immune to ground effects. That sucks. Well, let's knock it down with the. Actually, no. Actually, no, no. All that. Interdict first. Silent scream, go. Yes. Wow. Why is she up there? I guess because of the. Did we already kill the Minpugra? Yeah, Katie pieced it up for a bunch of damage. Get out of there, grieving mother. Kill that thing. 
Go ahead and bless everyone. Wow, those things melted. They were not very tough, the bitter, bitter spirits. Now let's take a look at our bestiary. End of lights, shadows. I don't see any category for the bitter spirits to be under. We kill one of these. Wisps, maybe. There we go. They're a type of wisp. So they have no DR versus anything. Well, no wonder they died so easily. Spite is among the most enduring of negative emotions. Hatred often cools over time. Sadness surrenders to acceptance. But the indignation brought about by cruelty, injustice, or even simple annoyance can infect the spirit and survive even beyond death. So it is with bitter spirits, which exist as little more than an amalgam of resentful instincts, inclined to lash out at anyone they perceive, and unsatisfied until their victim has suffered and died. Bitter spirits is also the name of a home-brewed liquor popular in the rural areas of northern Deerwood, and it can be described in much the same terms. So they're basically just spite demons, or... <laughs> They're just little bundles of irritation and hatred and anger that uh, want to kill you. Alright, well that's fine. I'm not too concerned about those. The Phoenix 235, hello! How you doing? Welcome. Laying low. Finding more plants. Lots of plants. Just... Let's see what there is to see here. Some river reed, what is this? Quick save. This simple shrine is covered in a thick layer of snow, fallen leaves, and feathers. A pair of curving bones flanks the altar. Examine the shrine more closely. The shrine does not appear to be frequented very often, though traces of old candle wax line the edges of the stone. Under a dusting of frost, you note a rectangular section of the altar's surface it seems to be cleaner than the rest, as if something once rested here. I'll touch it. You feel a tingle run up your arm as you set your fingers, fingers to the altar. In the instance after, the wind seems to die down, the sounds of the wilderness growing muted to your hearing. Then you hear a sudden low growl, quickly joined by more. A vision strikes you like a sudden memory, though it is unbound by time or place. Within a sea of darkness you see a great beast, formless save for its gleaming fangs. It growls and snaps with increasing desperation and savagery, and for a moment you feel its rage as your own, a possessive fury that tears at you. Something has been taken, your territory threatened, and the price for it will be blood. The vision fades just as swiftly as it came. The altar stands silent and still, and the air fills again with the occasional trill of birdsong. Addendum added. There's a shrine of Galloway within the russet wood. It appears that an item which once adorned the shrine has been removed, an act which has incurred great wrath. 
Ah, I shall so be quiet as a calm sea. We need to find that which, which is not very that which belongs to the altar. So as to forestall the wrath of this creature. It looks very cold. We don't seem to be suffering any ill effects from the cold yet. Discovered a landslide. Alright, so there was like a big avalanche here and there's a person half buried in it. Let's see who we've got here. He's got boots of speed. Potion of flame shield. Hmm. Some stalwart bonies and some lockpicks. Um. Plus three move speed. Wow. But I don't really want to get rid of my stealth boots. Still though, those are nice. She's carrying too much crap. here some kind of rune carved stones these stones are strangely warm to the touch though most of the runes are indecipherable a few look like names so these are like gravestones of a sort maybe some more ringer berries there's a pale elf over there going on there quick save crag ogre some pale elves well let's I'm investigate ready. this hey of course by inv let's I mean in a dare investigate this a group of elves stands in a scattered ring around an ogre but they do not appear to be engaged in battle. The ogre is bound with rope, and one of the elves tugs harshly on the line tied around the ogre's neck. This is pointless, beast. He won't get anywhere being stubborn. The ogre only snorts angrily and pulls back on the rope. Two other elves prod him somewhat timidly with their pole axes. The ogre does not budge. Hey, Vamril! One of the elves has turned to look at you, motioning at the man occupied with the ogre. The elves turn to look at you. Punch the nearest elf. And I just immediately my eyes went to that. <laughs> the elves turn to look at you, hands falling to their weapons. Vamril gives a final sharp yank on the rope before he turns as well. Fire an arrow at the rope. Punch the nearest elf. Just any random elf. The first elf I see getting punched. Don't even care. <laughs> it's awesome. What are you doing to that ogre? Need some help. Another sad specimen for an ogre. Um, we'll go with asking a question first. What are you doing to that ogre? This creature will accompany us to Westrend. We've had some trouble on the roads, but having an ogre along should put an end to it. I purchased him from some slave hunters not far from here. Looking to recoup their expenses, I expect. He grunts. 
Not sure he's worth quite so much coin. Okay. Yeah, uh, I wasn't too concerned about the ogre until you said slave hunters. I'm not a fan of fucking slavery, so this shit, this shit right here... Yeah, this is all, this is all going goodbye. That's, this, this shit's done. I'm gonna fire an arrow at the rope. For anyone can speak another word, you have knocked and loosed an arrow. It flies true, striking the rope between the ogre's neck and hands, and the bindings give with a snap. With a triumphant roar, the ogre pulls the rest of his fetters away and lunges toward his captors. Nice. Stop that ogre, but don't damage my property, and bring me that fool's head! Alright, so... Oh, the ogre's set as an enemy, too, though. I don't want to kill the ogre, necessarily. I just wanted to kill the elves. Pale Elf Assassin, Vamrel. Alright, well... Let's, um... Let's figure this out, so... Hey, there's gonna move in. Is he gonna D up? He's gonna grab this guy. She's gonna run up. He's gonna shoot Vamrel. He's gonna knock some people down with repulsing seal. She is gonna silent scream some. Pale elves. She's also just gonna run up for now. <laughs> Fucking Vamril's getting blinded in the face. I'm ready. Alright. Pale Elf Assassin. Let's knock this one down. Go after this one. It's interdict. Now, is he still going to attack us? Yup! <laughs> He's not playing! Alright, that's fine. Shoot him with this. Get him with this. Just get him. Ogre v Ogre! Hey. Ogres. Let's go. Alright. Well, I'm a little sad that I had to kill the ogre too. What was the point of me setting him free? But hey, you know, whatever. Dumbass ogre. Baby, it ain't ogre till it's ogre. Just saying. Uh, fine. Uh, potion of Eldritch Aim. Nasal Helms. Those Helms are good for your sinuses. 
Okay. Talk to me about this sword we picked up, Bitter Cut. It's a saber. It grants infestation of maggots once per rest, vile thorns twice per rest. Less defense against poison attacks. This saber belonged to the first mate of the Hangman's Bounty, a notorious pirate ship that roamed the Deadfire Archipelago three centuries ago. Legend has it that the crew seized a slave galley, and after killing the masters, decided to sell the slaves at the next port. One of the slaves, an elderly man with a scarred face and beady black eyes, came forward and demanded that he and his fellows be set free. The pirates laughed and refused him, but the old slave persisted. He warned them of the terrible plagues and punishments awaiting them, yet still they refused. When he raised his voice in anger, the first mate drew her saber and ran him through. Putrid green bile poured from the wound, running upward along the sword while the sailors watched in horror. The corruption spread from the dying slave's chest to the first mate's saber and arm, filling her veins with venom and her flesh with skirming maggots. The west rest of the crew drove the ship aground, fled, leaving the slaves to flee and the first mate to rot next to her tainted blade. Yeah, that blade is not good. We're going to go ahead and throw that right into the stash for selling. My thoughts will be as silent as my feet. So evidence of slavers has been found. Oh, I see a winter wolf over there of some description. Hmm. We don't have much ice on the south coast. Maybe you should go first. Ice. Ooh, it's a frozen lake. And who's this? <gasps> that's the guy from the Temple of Andra. And that's the place where he's dumping the stuff. As you walk toward the frozen pond, a figure appears through the mist. Kneeling down next to a hole on the ice, the figure picks up a large chest and throws it into the water without hesitation. The figure looks around. You glimpse a face you've seen before. Quexital, one of Lavda's acolytes, pulls a hood over his head and throws a leather bag over his shoulder. Without looking back, he walks away in the direction of Stalward Village. So we won't be interacting with him, apparently. Regrets worth trading. Retrieve Ocran's medallion. Upon arriving at the pond in the russet wood, I spotted Kexidal, an acolyte of Andra's temple, hurriedly dropping a large object into its waters. If this is the spot where offerings are cast away, Ocran's heirlooms should lie at the bottom. Interesting. And what does the flame reveal? Alright, well, we will go check that out eventually, but first we're going this way. Ooh, there's a bunch of dead people up here. Bunch of dead people. I see dead people! Oh, great jaw. There's a giant ass bear up here. Arquivus, lockpick, stag hide, wolf hide. Oil of resourcefulness. Camping supplies. Journal page. Day four. Took down another stag today. Still not enough hides to make this trip worth it. Day six. Blizzard coming. Staying put until it passes. Day 9. Close call with a pair of ogres. Lucky they didn't see us. Day 11. Tracking a large bear that Nurin spotted from the ridge. Might even be Greyjaw. My grandfather told stories about him. Wouldn't that be something if we were the ones to finally kill him? Day 12. It's definitely Greyjaw. We're dangerous to close to the ogre cavern, but we've got Greyjaw trapped and his hide is too valuable to pass up. The three of us should be able to handle one bear. And you can see how that worked out for them. Run away! Yeah? Okay, hold on. Um... Coil of resourcefulness. Trap accuracy. Weapon change recovery. Plus one dexterity. 
don't think anybody wants to wear that belt, really. This simple belt isn't much to look at, but it's been a favorite of savvy adventurers for years. It's snug but comfortable fit, and its myriad pouches, sheaths, and loops allow the wearer quick access to weapons and tools. Armorers and leather workers have tried over the years to replicate the coil of resourcefulness, or even to improve it, but the ideal design remains a matter of controversy. All anyone can agree on is that none of the recently produced belts are as good as the original. Every few years, however, an adventurer will show up at an inn, campfire, or hunting lodge, claiming to wear the original coil of resourcefulness. Speculation will run, run rampant once again as supporters and detractors compare the most recent specimen to the various and contradictory accounts from old adventurers' journals. This is a pretty uh, famous item, so who knows if that's the original or just one of the, one of the copies. We don't know the answer to that. Hey. I'm ready. Huh? Right, let's do this. First things first. We're gonna withering strike this thing. Got him! Greyjaw kind of went down like a punk. He was no problem. Greyjaw's hide. Elder Bear Claws. Fur on this bear hide is exceptionally lustrous and thick. Although it's of no particular use to you, it will still fetch a high price wherever it's sold. Be cautious. Be constant. Yeah? Alright, well, Greyjaw the famous bear has been uh, slain. Oh, there's a Min Puigra up ahead. Hold on. Hold him up. Hold him up. Some winter wolves. Lots of winter wolves. Wow! Help! Nice. 
Well, that was easier than it looked. And what does the flame reveal? Oh, look at this. Lots of blood and carnage. And a cave. A cave. A fiendish looking cave. A wolf cave, apparently. This looks like it's a pretty big map, considering how little of it I've explored. Alright, into the wolf cave we go, then. Here we are in the wolf cave. I bet there's a lot of wolves in it. There's a lot of bones and blood on the snow. Oh boy, yeah. here we go. We got wolves that you need to talk to and shit. Wounded hunters. Sure. Alright, hold up. Hey. We'll move it there forward. I'm ready. Palagina behind him. Hmm? Everybody else can hang back a second. We'll quick save. Yeah? Hey. Alright, Adair, go ahead. Oh, it's a werewolf. It's not just a wolf. Oh, it's a druid wolf. Standing tall amongst the wolves inhabiting the cavern, this creature turns to face you as you venture forward. Scores of wounds and scars riddle its hide, and one dull eye stares out blindly from its skull. It growls a threat as you approach, one echoed by its fellows. <sighs> At the creature's feet lie two villagers, one heavily wounded. The other holds an arm across his stomach, and he looks up at you with pleading in his eyes. Help! Please help us! As the beast turns its head back towards the hunter, you sense a strange aura emanating from it. It is as if its hide were holding in a tempest of soul essence, fierce and all-consuming as flame. Um, if I was a druid, I'd have a special thing I could say here. I'm going to try reaching out for its soul as a watcher. It takes little effort before the beast's soul threatens to overwhelm you with its intensity. Wrath and hunger buffet you on all sides until you reach through the storm to find a smaller, dimmer pulse of light and are swept headlong into a memory. The chill bites into your cheeks and your lungs burn a little from the run. You look down at the little wooden carving in your hand and run your thumb along the edge of the carved bear's spine. Maybe this is the thing that was taken from the altar. The totem has already brought you luck. You found two rabbits in as many snares, and that's a rare enough feat these days. You're certain now that this was a gift from Galloween, that you were meant to find it on that lonely shrine and take it. Oh, okay. I'm starting to see what happened here. Soldier. Your father's voice snaps you out of your reflections, and you rush forward to rejoin him beside the campfire. You brandish the hairs and catch a glimpse of a rare smile under his graying beard. Okay, so now either Thirsch doesn't know, or he just straight up wasn't telling us the whole story. Because this is Thirsch's son. Obviously he stole the thing from the Shrine of Galloween, and, and he was cursed because of it, or punished by the god, and turned into this beast. So either Thirsch thinks... The beast is unrelated and the beast killed his son, or he knows this is really his son and needs to be put down, but he can't quite bring himself to do it. One or, one or the other. But the smile disappears almost immediately as a shadow falls over you both. You feel the rush of wind a moment before the log comes crashing down and roll out of the way just in time. You hear your father cry out in pain somewhere nearby. Both the hares and the totem slip from your grasp. You can feel power surging within you. Your heart thunders in your chest, but instinct pulls your senses into order, and you feel the familiar stretch of limbs, the sudden dizzying shift in height. But something is wrong. Your senses are fading rather than growing stronger. There's a howling in your head, like a screaming chorus, and everything in you shrieks for you to bite, to tear, to eat. Oh, we've all been there, I mean. 
pretty standard. The memory slips from you, and when you come back to yourself, the beast is shaking its head as if to clear an itch, clawing at its ears. Seldren. The creature snaps and snarls, evidently uncomprehending. It edges toward the nearest hunter, even as it watches you balefully with its single eye. Uh, I'll throw a torch as a distraction. You fling a torch at the beast, and it gives a sharp yelp as the torch bounces off its hide with a burst of embers. The beast leaps away from the hunters, stumbling in its panic, but the wolves surge forward, snarling. All right. Let's take a look at this real quick. Bring down your quarry. I've tracked the wolf to its lair and must now confront it within. The wolf I found in the cavern bears more resemblance to a spirit shifter, though it appears incapable of communicate, communicating. My watcher abilities granted me a vision from what appears to have been the druid's past. In the vision, a young man took a totem from a shrine of Galloway. His subsequent attempt to shift into his druid form seems to have resulted in his becoming trapped in that other skin. Perhaps the totem has something to do with all this. It may still be at the old campsite where it was dropped. See, so if I... If I went and got this... Thing, I could probably cure him or whatever. But it looks like I'm going to be forced to kill him right now. Which is unfortunate. Hey. Very unfortunate. Alright, let's, um... Gonna knock down. Just fucking aced that wolf. For 45 plus 10 and a half plus 10 and a half. Alright, let's uh. Uh-oh. It's up. Yeah, we're gonna have to fight it. Okay. The dare. Try to knock him down. Sworn enemy! Just shoot him. Actually, shoot the other wolf. Let's, uh... Interdict or whatever. Shoot the other wolf. Weakening shot. Hey. Well, so much for curing him. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Quest updated. The Hunter's Favor. Return to Thirsh. The wolf that Thirsh hunted was more than a mere beast. It was a druid so wholly consumed by his animal spirit that he could no longer engage rationally with Kith. He gave me little choice but to slay him. Thirsh may appreciate an update on the situation. But it was, it was also Thirsh's son, right? I mean, it was. They shall see nothing while I see much. Well, we rescued the hunters. Bless you, stranger. We'll make our way back to the village. I thought we were done for. Those wolves swarmed our camp. That creature dragged us back here. 
Bless you, stranger. Thought we were done for. Yeah, okay. Alright. Well, we saved those people. I guess that's good. Just look for some mini loot that might be hidden around in the cave. Kurox brand. And a lot of gold. What is this? It's a wand. Well, I don't really use wands, but... 10% chance to combusting wounds on hit or crit. Fireball once per rest. Oh, that's pretty nice. Kurok was an Adiran noble in Red Saris who owned 600 acres of Vorlas fields. He considered himself a pious man, and his neighbors and tenant farmers knew him for his fervent devotion to Wudica. He labored alongside his tenants and kept meticulous records of production and sales, yet he was also known for his pitiless temper and his ruthlessness with shirkers. He carried a switch with him and would savagely thrash any worker he caught dawdling or lagging. Yet he was a favorite of the Imperial Governor, and so his excesses went overlooked. One day, Widewin approached him while he was doling out an especially savage beating. Widewin, fresh from his encounter with Aethys, demanded that Kirok release his victim. When the Lord refused, Widewin asked what the tenant farmer had done to deserve such treatment. He, legit he neglects his duties in the field, Kirok replied. Every day he gathers yet less, yet he still enjoys the protection of my estate. Is it any wonder your harsh treatment of the man would render him unable to fulfill his duties? Let him enjoy a week of rest. He will return to your service renewed, said Widewin. Kirok sneered. You would reward his indolence! It is my right and my responsibility to discipline him for his errors. What authority gave you such power over this man? Widewin asked. Wudica, the Oathbinder! It is she who set me above the farmer as his lord and employer, and her order that I serve in disciplining him. Pretty much everybody that follows Wudica seems to be an asshole, and they use her as an excuse to be an asshole. Which means either she's an asshole god, or just has misguided followers. Uh, but Widewin persisted. Does not the quiet winter beget the fruitful spring? It is by Aethys' clemency that we enjoy rebirth in each new life, and restoration with each morning. And it is Aethys' season that blesses your fields. I say to you again, release this man. In his fury, Kurok turned on Wide when his switch raised to strike, yet the rod grew suddenly hot in his hand. He cried out, and as he held the rod, it ignited. The flame that gushed forth blinded him instantly, scarring his face in the manner of the burned queen. Kirak dropped the smoldering rod and fled to tell the governor of what he had witnessed. Pretty cool. I think I'm gonna sell it. <laughs> After all that, this is a really important holy See relic, and it, historically and everything, it's really a big deal. Um, major, major his holy relic of the Church of Aethus, but eh, I'm gonna sell it. Scroll of confusion. Does someone on one of my... Oh, she's gonna... Alright, so we saved the hunters. We defeated the wolf who turned out to be Thirsh's son. I wish I could have cured him, but unfortunately he didn't give us that option. If I had already found the thing beforehand, I probably could have done that, but I went in the cave instead. So, what can you do? Had to kill him. What can you do? And that... Now that we exited this cave back into the open map of Russet Wood, that is going to do it for this episode. That's it for now. Next time we'll continue exploring the Russet Wood. Thank you for watching. This has been Josiah Plays Pillars of Eternity.